What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Sony Handycam HDR CX405. So this is the camera that I actually personally use for all of my product reviews and my laser videos. I've had it for about two years now, so I figured it was time to do a product review on it and share my opinion with you guys. This one retails for $190 on Amazon. And then if you pay anywhere between like 20 to 50 extra dollars, you can get one of the, um, they have like bundles on Amazon where you can get like a tripod, a carrying case, and like every accessory you'll ever need. Um, and if you spend a little extra money, you can get one of those bundles too. I'll have all the links down below in the description. So the camera itself shoots at 1920 by 1080 at 60p, and it takes still shots at 9.2 megapixels and on the bottom here this is where the battery goes it takes one very small battery and I'm not sure on the exact size I know it's a 3.7 volt but I'm not sure it looks like 1400 milliamps on this one and it looks like there's an area where a spare battery would go but that little piece does not come out I've never found a way to get it to come out so it does just hold the one battery and it has a little screw in area on the bottom for tripods and this right here is a little multi-connection. I've never really used that one. And then on the strap, there's also a USB. And I believe you can use that USB for charging. I don't think you use that for hooking up to the computer, but I might be mistaken. I've never used that one either. I always just charge my batteries externally and I do my, my hookup to the computer via the micro SD card, which I take out of the camera. On the very front of the camera, there is a built-in lens cover, which I love. I hate when cameras do not have a built-in lens cover, and this one does, and that's how I've kept my lens intact all this time. Uh, the zoom feature is on the very top along with the photo button, and then the record button is on the very back. And opening up the screen on the side, there's just a couple more controls and connections in here. You have your little um, micro HDMI and your micro SD card. And then you have the screen with the little button for navigation and the playback button. So as you guys might have been able to tell, this camera's pretty bare bones as far as controls and whatnot. There's only five or six buttons on it and it's extremely easy to learn. Right out of the box you could master it within five minutes. The settings are pretty easy to navigate too. I usually just shoot in the highest frame rate and frame size possible which is 1920 by 1080 at 60p. And I don't really mess with a lot of the other settings like white balance and stuff like that because I don't really know a whole lot about it. So I leave it on whatever the default and automatic settings are. And besides that, this camera is pretty easy to navigate. I am going to give you guys a little test now of what the audio and video actually look like with this camera. So what I've been shooting with right now is my iPhone 6 Plus. I'm going to switch over to using the CX405 so you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to start off indoors and then take a step outside so you can see what it looks like in both indoors and outdoors. And the audio that you guys are hearing right now, that is voiceover with a microphone. That is not me recording the audio with the camera. So I'm going to stop talking for a second so you can hear the camera audio. So it definitely picks up on a lot of sounds and this right here is just a little ground dog we caught in our yard that we were trying to get rid of because he was eating up all our plants but this is the outdoor shot and it looks the best in outdoors and what impresses me the most is the zoom feature on this camera. It has a very good zoom at long distances and overall it looks very spectacular outdoors. Everything looks very clear and crisp and I mean, I'm not a big camera guy. I don't like study cameras, so I don't know all the like super technical stuff. But for me as a user, I've had about three or four cameras, and this is definitely the best of them for the price. I find that while zooming and recording at the same time, the zoom is pretty, um, pretty smooth. It's not like choppy and like I've had other cameras where while you're zooming and recording at the same time, it's kind of like stop, go, stop, go. It's a little bit choppy while you're doing the zoom. But for this one, it's pretty clear and crisp, and the autofocus feature works pretty well. And I also wanted to take a moment to show you guys the photograph feature on the camera. I was very surprised with the quality of the photos. They came out pretty nice. Um, this was actually kind of like my first time using the photograph feature because I always just used this for videos. I never really had a reason to take photos with it, but 
I was very pleased with the way they came out. And all of the photos taken with this camera come out with the dimensions of 4032 by uh, 2272 pixels, which was a lot larger than I was expecting the frame size to be. So I was very pleased with that as well. There's a lot of pixels and a lot of definition in those photos. So I'm going to kind of transition over to the reviewing aspect of this now. And if I had to describe this, uh, this camera in two words, it would be durable workhorse. This thing is extremely durable. I put this thing through a lot of um, a lot of wear and tear, really. I always toss it in a bag. I don't like put it in any protective case at all. I toss it in a bag with a bunch of other heavy things like my microphone, my laptop, all my cords and whatnot. And I've dropped it a number of times too, and I've had no issues with it. It hasn't it hasn't gone down in function whatsoever. So it's been very durable and it's been my workhorse. I've put a lot of hours on this thing and it still works like the day I first got it. It's dependable. It has um, a very good, a very good frame rate and frame size and uh, picture quality for the price, in my opinion. Uh, the price of one hundred ninety dollars, I thought, was pretty fair. And then, like I said, you can spring for the um, all the extra accessories for, I don't know, maybe fifty extra dollars. They have a bunch of Amazon bundles. I also really like that built-in lens cover feature, and I think the zoom feature is really good. Now there are some cons to this one. The size of the battery that it fits is very, very small, as you guys saw, and it's fully enclosed in the camera, meaning that you can't really get aftermarket ones that hang out of the camera and give you some extra space. So, I mean, the one I have right now is 1400 milliamps, and there might be some that have a bigger capacity than that, but they're not going to be bigger by much because the battery size is so small, you're really limited to how much you can record before you have to switch batteries. I usually get maybe like an hour to an hour and a half out of use. Um, probably closer to an hour if I'm doing like constant filming before I have to switch over. Now I got to thinking that maybe if you use that little USB charging cable and keep it plugged in while recording you can get some extra battery life that way but I looked it up and you are not able to record while charging unfortunately. And the second con for me was the microphone quality. Um, you can't really hear it too well when you're outside because there's enough background noise that it blocks it out. But when you're recording like inside in a dead silent room, you can hear some like static background noise from the operation of the camera. And there is no um, spot to hook up an external microphone. So you are limited on that as well if you wanted to hook one up. Um, you are kind of stuck with the microphone that's built in there and it's not like a horrible microphone but if you were using it for like talking like doing a review while you're going to be talking and not doing voiceovers afterwards I don't know if I would go with this one but I always do my voiceovers afterwards with the microphone so it didn't really change anything for me and one last thing that I wanted to mention that I don't think I brought up earlier is that the maximum micro SD card for this device is 64 gigabytes it won't take anything larger than that so overall I was very pleased with the two years of use I've gotten out of this so far and it really hasn't lost any value to me since day one it's very um, durable and dependable and I think the quality is very good there are some things that could use improvement but overall I think it was worth the investment so down below in the video description I'll try to compile some of the best links that I think would be the cheapest and some of those bundle links that I was telling you about that include the tripod and carrying bag and accessories. So if you guys found this video helpful in any way at all hit that like button down below and if you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button for more um, great product reviews just like this. And as always guys thank you for watching from XM360.